Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another running session. So a massive, massive thank you to This Train Terminates here, who suggested the idea for this video a long time ago, it must have been a year ago, so I'm sorry it's taken so long to get around to doing it, but here we are, we're getting to it. And the idea is this, it is to show how 060s change through time, it's um, the evolution, if you like, of 060s. So it's very, very simple, all I've done is I've found the oldest loco in my collection, the oldest 060, uh, in... Uh, real life, of course, prototypically speaking, not just in model form. And then I'm going to work my way through to the oldest, the most recent 060 design. Hopefully it'll be really, really interesting. I wasn't 100% sure which the oldest and which the newest ones were, so it was quite interesting to find that out. So hopefully you will find that interesting as well. But for now then, let's get on to the first one. Uh, not too sure if you'll be able to guess which one it is. Maybe you will. I couldn't guess. I, I had a few that I thought it might be, but I couldn't tell you for sure. Uh, but I know now, of course, so let's go and find out which the oldest one was. So here we are at the turntable then, and yes, indeed, it seems it is actually the Terrier that is the oldest 060 in my collection. And these were actually introduced in the early 1870s. And I knew these things were old, but I think I've perhaps forgotten just how old. So that is very, very old, and I don't think, anyway, I don't think I own an older 060 than that. Anyway, so she's going to be running today with a passenger train. There's two Southern Railway coaches waiting at the countryside station there. So while I get her to those coaches and get her coupled, I thought I would give you a little bit of history on the Terriers. So let's do that then, hopefully she still works. So the proper name for the Terrier is the LB and SCR A1 class, which was designed by William Stroudley and built between 1872 and 1880. The A1s originally hauled commuter trains in the southeast of London during the LB and SCR years, and then they were inherited of course by the Southern Railway in 1923 when they remained in traffic. Withdrawal of the class occurred over several years, the first being as early as 1901, but many years later, by 1964, all members of the class were withdrawn, but luckily 10 have been preserved. Okay, hopefully that was a good coupling then. Let's, well, let's see. Let's bring her forwards a touch and test it. Yep, that looks good to me. Okay, well, let's get her out of these sidings then with the coaches and she could do a lap of honour. All right. Hope she's all right on the points. Ooh, she did actually cut out, but she managed to save it. That was quite impressive. Yeah, look at that, super slow. Of course, this is the, uh, the old Hornby slash Dapple Terrier. Uh, very excited, of course, for the new Hornby one to come out. And I suppose if you're uh, ordering the Rails of Sheffield and Dapple version, uh, you'll be excited about that as well. But uh, at the time of filming this, at least, uh, none of those have been released. So uh, we're still stuck with the old ones. <laughs> but uh, maybe not for all that much longer. So we'll have to wait and see. To be honest with you though, it is a beautiful model, isn't it? I mean, I don't exactly know how old this one is now, but the tooling is years and years old. And generally speaking, it still looks the part, doesn't it? Um, in fact, it makes me super excited to see how the new versions are going to look, uh, given how good this old version is. So uh, yeah, really quite looking forward to that. All right, there we go. So I'm going to wait until she's in shot and then I'll bring her to a nice stop so that you can get a close look. I think just about there should be fine. Okay, so there she is, Whitechapel, absolutely beautiful. And of course she's going to be running alongside two other locos in just a second. But for now then, let's get on to the second loco, which is actually a very, very special arrival. It should be arriving in just a second, so let's not miss it. Let's go and check it out. All right, so this locomotive was introduced in 1883, so that's 11 years after the Terrier. It is, of course, the Dean Goods locomotive. Now, this train is actually a layout-to-layout -layout service. This train has come from the Northern Seoul Express channel, uh, who you might also know from the Great Model Railway Challenge. And I'll put up a link right now in the top corner so that you can check out his video of this Dean Goods train leaving his layout. 
Uh, but yeah, I've never done this before. It's a layout to layout service incorporated into a running session and I think it works really, really well. So do check out Callum's channel. He is also called Callum. Don't get him mixed up with Callum Wilcox. They are two different Callums <laughs> who do know each other too. So it's very confusing. But uh, no, this is the other Callum. Uh, to the one that I usually do layout to layout service videos from. So the Dean Goods then, let's have a little bit of history on her. Also known as the GWR 2301 class, the Dean Goods were introduced in 1883 to the design of William Dean for goods work on the railway. Now by the time the Second World War broke out, many of the Dean Goods locos had been withdrawn only to be dragged back into service when they were requisitioned by the War Department. Now of 260 that were built, only 54 of these survived until 1948 when of course they became part of the British Railways fleet and as time went by they were eventually replaced by the Standard Class 2s which of course were much more modern and the last of the Dean Goods was withdrawn in 1957 being 60 years old. Now only one of the classes being preserved and and sadly the remainder were scrapped. All right, so there she is then, the very, very lovely Dean Goods locomotive, made by Oxford Rail, which I don't think I said earlier on. And uh, yes, quite an interesting model, really, and quite a beautiful one, I think you'd agree. So there we go then. So far, we've only looked at locomotives from the 1800s. So now then, it's time to take a look at a loco from the 20th century. And here we have a lovely, lovely double header. Now this class is from right on the turn of the century. 1900 these were introduced and this is the C-Class. A really, really lovely 060 tender engine from the SECR. So let's have a little bit of history on these lovely locos then. So this class was designed by Harry Wainwright and it was introduced to the SECR, which stands for the South Eastern and Chatham Railway, in 1900. Now these were mainly intended for freight, but occasionally they did do some passenger work as well. And the final batch of engines were even kitted out with heating equipment so that they could obviously provide a bit better service, I guess. Now in 1923, the class became part of the Southern Railway, just like the Terriers did, where they performed mainly passenger duties. And of course they were fine for that because they had that uh, heating on board now. Now 109 were produced in total between 1900 and 1908, but sadly only one of them was preserved. The first withdrawal took place in 1947 as a result of poor maintenance, but the remainder of the class did survive until 1953 when further withdrawals were made. So how about that then for a mixed train? There we are, let's bring those to a stop. I'm only sorry that I can't show you them in the SECR green because uh, they do look an awful lot more modern in black liveries like this. But of course in 1900 when they were first introduced they would have had that gorgeous SECR green. I'm sure you know the one. Uh, absolutely amazing. Bankman did actually make them uh, in the SECR green and in fact they're bringing out some more this year for about 200 quid. So needless to say I'll still not have an SECR green one anytime soon. But uh, I'm quite happy with these to be honest with you. So with that then let's have a run with all of this together. So let's start the C-classes first. There we go. A little bit faster with those just because uh, I think locos and trains were running a little bit faster by the time the 1900s came along. And then we have the Dean Goods which is naturally quite a slow runner anyway. And then of course the uh, Terrier uh, which is a faster runner but I just keep her, keep her down a little bit on the controller to keep it realistic or as realistic as it can be on my layout. So enjoy the running session then. So there we are at the halfway mark then, so uh, let me know in the comments which has been your favourite up to now, and then at the end of the video, send me another comment and let me know whether or not your favourite has changed, and uh, that will be quite interesting to find out, I think. Uh, I wonder whether older locos will fare better than more modern ones. I think they probably will, but uh, you never know, do you? You never know, so we'll find out. It's very, very difficult for me to decide, so if you can't decide too, <laughs> that's absolutely fine. I think it's... I think it's got to be the Terrier, although I do love the C-Class and I do love the Dean Goods. And look at that for a mixed train. Quite a good pair, aren't they? They've got quite a lot of pulling power, especially when you put two together. Have those C-Class locos. I do love that Dean Goods, though. For quite obvious reasons, I suppose. And a massive thank you to uh, Callum or Northern Soul Express for uh, collaborating on that one. All right then folks, well I think that's it for the old 060s. We're gonna move on now then to the second half where we will show some of the later 060s. Right up until, well I guess right up until they turned to diesel and stopped producing them. So let's get to that right now then. 
and hopefully you enjoy what's still to come. All right, so the first lot are all safely back into the various sidings and things, as you can see. And now we're going to do another 13-year jump ahead to 1913 with this. Now, this is just a classic tank engine. It really, really is. Uh, it's a Gresley classic. It's the J50. Absolutely gorgeous, this one. And she is going to be hauling this rake of box vans. Now, the doors, I want you to notice, are all shut on those because they always seem to end up open by the end of my running sessions. But I just want to point out that they're shut now. Are we going to watch really carefully? and see if they open. They always seem to. Anyway, let's get this started then, the J50. I'll give her a few laps of honour, assuming she gets out of the point work okay, and I'll tell you all about the class while we do it. All right, the J50 in the LNER black, and she's stopped. Okay, the hand of God is going to swoop in and save the day, or probably derail everything, I don't know. One of the two. Nope, nope, save the day. Well, let's wait till the box vans get out of there first. Yeah, no, that looks all right to me. Okay, here's a little history then on the J50. The J50 started life in 1913 when they were introduced to the Great Northern Railway to the design of Sir Nigel Gresley. In the early days, they were originally known as the J23. They were mainly intended for short-haul coal traffic and shunting duties. In total, 102 of the class were produced between 1913 and 1939, although a few variations were built into the design, most notably some had much larger boilers than the others. In 1923, just like most of the Great Northern engines, the class became part of the LNER, uh, as you can tell with this model of course, at which time the class was reclassified into two different classes, uh, the J51 was one of them, as well as the J50 of course, and they had the smaller boilers. Now in 1948 they were reclassified again by British Railways to a 4F, and that was just the way the British Railways liked to do it, uh, which is obviously quite a high power classification for an 060 tank. None were preserved very sadly despite 102 being produced, but a replica is in production, although it doesn't look like that's going to be done anytime soon, but fingers crossed that they will make some progress on it. Alright, there we go then, the lovely J50. Had to run that one, definitely one of my favourite 060s. So there it is up close, and you can really tell there that even by 1913, new tank engines being produced were so much larger than tender engines that were only 20 or 30 years old. And so that's quite an interesting insight really, isn't it, into how demand on the railways must have grown. So that's the J50, we'll be back with that in just a second, but for now we're going to jump ahead another 16 or so years and uh, look at a loco from the Great West. So we are indeed skipping ahead 16 years this time to 1929 with this, the 5700 pannier tank. And you'll notice that even though we've advanced 16 years here, the size of the tank engine doesn't differ all that much from the J50. So I wonder if there is a certain point that arrives where you can't just keep building them bigger and bigger because the amount of water and coal needed would just make them inefficient. Uh, I wonder, I wonder, because you do tend to get a lot of tank engines that are at least 060s that are this sort of size. So anyway, yeah, this is the Great Western 57XX Pannier. As you can tell, it is in the Great North and South Railway livery, the fictional livery from the Railway Children. And uh, this is just the nicest model of a 57XX I've got, at least in terms of detail. So excuse the livery, they didn't really ever look like that or although one did for the uh, short time it was in the film um, but as you can see it's got some great western coaches three of those not the railway children coaches because uh, not a big fan of those and uh, yeah let's get this started then the pannier tank such a classic 060 design of course i couldn't run uh, an 060 running session without one so let's get that started then there we are let's try a nice gentle start all right, and I'm going to get her onto the middle line then, and while I do, I'll give you a little bit of history on them. So the Great Western 5700 class, or the 57XX as it's also known, was one of many classes of pannier tank to be built for the Great Western Railway. These were designed by Charles Collett and they were built between 1929 and 1950, with a whopping 863 being produced in total. Now, the 5700 was the latest in a long line of versatile pannier tank engines, which were used for shunting, light goods, and even sometimes passenger services, so very, very versatile, in fact. A hefty 16 have been preserved, many of which can still be seen in running order, which is always fantastic to hear.
All right, so there we go then. That's the pannier tank. Let's bring her to a stop just in front of the J50. And yeah, in many ways, this pannier tank actually looks more old fashioned than the J50 does. I suppose partly that's due to the livery on this, which I do love by the way, even though it isn't all that realistic. The livery does make it look like a much, much older loco. But of course, the pannier tank design did date back many, many, many years, probably before the, uh, the days of the J50. In fact, certainly before the days of the J50. So even though this is quite a modern version of the pannier tank, there were a lot of older classes of pannier tank which existed uh, way before it. Anyway, so that's it for the tank engines now we're going to move on to the final loco of the day which is a tender engine no doubt you'll guess which one it is though because it's one that i absolutely love so let's get to it then we're jumping forward to 1942 let's get to it so yes, of course it is the fantastic Southern Railway bullied Q1. And even though this is a mere, what, 13 years older than the pannier tank I've just shown you, I would easily believe that there were decades and decades and decades between them. Because this class looks completely different. Now this wasn't in fact the final 060 designed in Britain and built in Britain or whatnot. I think even I've got some that are newer, the Hunslet Austerity 060s, uh, I think were slightly newer than this. But I think this is definitely the most modern looking 060 that I've got and it was definitely a design that was completely and utterly moulded by the austerity of the Second World War. And just for comparison, just to show you how far the 060s came over time, there's the uh, Terrier just next to it there. You can just see the difference in size there. It's, uh, you know, easily twice as large, if not quite a lot more. It's quite incredible, really. So anyway, yeah, you can see this Q1 has got a train of mixed freight. It's got some Southern Railway livestock vans. It's got some, uh, well, it's got all kinds, really, including a Southern Railway brake van at the back there. So I hope you enjoy seeing this one run. As I say, it's one of my favourites, just because it's such an unusual looking loco. For now, then, let's get this started. The beautiful bullied Q1. So as you may know, these beautiful Q1s, or maybe beautiful is a bit subjective, either way they were designed by Oliver Bullied and they were first introduced in 1942. And of course they were a class of austerity freight locomotives used heavily during the Second World War. Although to many the class was definitely not attractive, the engines were extremely efficient, admittedly, and they were very powerful too. And in fact they were considered the ultimate design of 060 locomotive. The Q1s easily hauled trains which were usually only suitable for much larger locomotives, making them useful in all manner of different duties, especially ones where lighter locomotives, smaller locomotives were required. A total of 40 were built during 1942 and sadly only one remains in preservation though and that of course is C1, the first of the class. So there you have it then folks, what a spread of different eras that has been. Uh, so six locos, all from very, very different times, and uh, hopefully that was a good demonstration of how 060s changed over time. So let's get all of these started then, there goes the J50, all going in the same direction for some reason this time, but uh, never mind. And I hope you enjoyed this one last running session with them. So there you have it then folks, you have seen all six of today's models and uh, yeah, it's very very difficult isn't it to come up with a favourite out of all of that lot. I think for me though it has got to be the Q1, I think uh, the Terrier has been beaten from the first half just because I, uh, I'm just a big fan of the Q1 and I always have been. Uh, so let me know anyway, I'll put up a poll, you can let me know which your favourite one was, I honestly can't predict which one you're all going to pick. Uh, I really couldn't say, uh, so it will be very interesting anyway, but uh, either way, I hope you did enjoy at least one of them that I showed today, if not more. That J50 is something else though, isn't it? That is a wonderful model. But yes, unfortunately, uh, the Q1 wins it for me, I reckon. I mean, I'm not saying I find it beautiful, but certainly attractive in its own odd sort of way. <laughs> I 
All right then, everybody. Well, I hope you did enjoy that running session. Uh, yeah, that was a bit of something different, wasn't it? And uh, yes, I really enjoyed doing that. So as I say, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very, very much for your company. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon. I think I'll do a review or something next time. So we've got that to look forward to. Got to decide which one, of course. But uh, that's always quite a nice job, deciding. So anyway, folks, I will see you very, very soon. Thanks again for watching. And uh, take care of yourselves. All right. Cheers, everybody.